The views, information, and opinions expressed during the following program are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent the views of Access Communications, its representatives, or its employees. Okay, good evening everyone. We'll call the August 19th council meeting to order. Uh, first of all, under presentations, we have none this evening. Adoption of the agenda. Could I have a motion, please, to adopt the agenda as presented? Councillor Clark, seconded by. Councillor Cernick, all in favor? Carried. Thank you. Next, could I have a motion, please, to adopt the minutes of the regular council meeting held on July 15th? Councillor Vroba, seconded by. Councillor Ford. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Next, under original communications, delegations, and petitions, we have the resignation of Matthew Stepp as city building official. I'm writing to formally resign my position in the build as a building official for the city of Estevan, effective August 9th, 2024. I've been presented with another job opportunity that will allow me to gain the experience and confidence in achieving my class three building officials license. I have enjoyed my time at the city of Estevan and appreciate the opportunities that I have been provided with during it. I will do everything I can to make this transition as smooth as possible. I look forward to staying in touch and wish the city nothing but success. Sincerely, Matthew Stepp. Could we have a motion, please, to accept uh, the resignation? Thank you, Councillor Ford, seconded by. Councillor Walliser, ready for the question. All in favor? Carried with regret. Okay, next, under original communications, delegations, and petitions, we have appointment of Municode contracting. City Manager, did you want to talk about that? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So just to clarify, so this is our form that we need to update uh, if we have anybody acting on the city's behalf uh, from Unicode Services. Uh, as you can see, we they have added Matthew Stepp, so he is <laughs> in the area to complete this work. So um, uh, just need approval to accept the people listed on here to certify they can work for the City of Estevan on a contract basis with Unicode. Okay. Thank you, City Manager. We'll need a motion to certify Clayton Meyer, Ryan Thiessen, uh, Shania Carche, Clint Vargo, Kelsey Rebrina, and Matthew Stepp of Municode. Are you making that motion, Councillor Clark? Thank you. Have we got a seconder, Councillor Cernick? Ready for the question? All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Okay, next, under original communications, delegations, and petitions, we have from Councillor Cernick, he would like to discuss a possible plebiscite. Councillor Cernick. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, um, this discussion, I've been on the minor hockey board for the past couple of years, um, and this discussion has happened, obviously, with people that use the arenas, people that don't use the arenas, and it's basically why I'm torn on the subject. Uh, usually you have a pretty good gauge just communicating with people. Uh, the need for another arena, there's no doubt that there's a need for another arena. The question is, is do the citizens of Estevan want another arena? So that's where the plebiscite comes about, you know, on behalf of all the users of the, of the arenas, Affinity Place, Power Dodge Arena, I'd like to propose that we do a plebiscite to gauge the voters' concern about another arena. Um, a survey would only reach so many people where a plebiscite would actually reach the voters, the people that actually got off their butts on voting day got out to vote, this is, your, this is your chance to have your say, and obviously you get to vote for your mayor and councillors at the same time. So, and we always hear about increasing voter turnout. Um, a question of this nature, obviously I do believe, would, in, would increase voter turnout. Again, if you want another arena, get out and vote. If you don't want another arena, get out and vote. Now let's see where it goes. The question simple in my mind is, does Estevan need another arena? 
Yes or no? Okay, thank you, Councillor Cernick. And basically what you're asking is Council's uh, agreement to go ahead and when we hold the next election, upcoming election, that we put it out as a plebiscite on the ballot. Absolutely, yep. And this will be for ice surface, not like a riding arena, a uh, ice surface <laughs> arena. It could be a multi-purpose arena, but ice would be definitely the mainstay of it. But hopefully, what if, if there was something built, it would have multiple purposes in mind, so. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ford. Thanks, Your Worship, and thanks, Councillor Sternick, for bringing this forward. Um, I really like the idea of a plebiscite, but I also like the idea of a survey, just because there's so many hockey users and ice users that don't actually live in this community. We have a lot of rural ice users in our community. So I, I, if we are going to do this, I would actually like to see a combination of both if possible. That way we can kind of gauge our voters, but also gauge the outside community that don't have the ability to actually vote and make this decision. Wow, Councillor Ford, I don't know how we would do that with our election vote, have the RMs come in to vote. Uh, go ahead. Thanks, Your Worship. That's why I suggest the, the combination with the survey and the plebiscite. So if there's a survey, you have the ability to do it online. The plebiscite is only for those who are able to vote, but at least the survey is able, you're able to pass along to your, to your rural community. So you're suggesting we have a survey in conjunction with yes. the plebiscite. Now, one good thing about the plebiscite, it's not binding. So, okay, any other comments? Councillor Grover. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, I actually would be in agreement with the plebiscite if, because of the fact that it's not binding. So um, it doesn't mean that by doing this, you'll actually have the next council, whoever is elected, making sure that they do do a rank or don't do a rank. Because there's a lot of other factors that go into this because as you mentioned, ice surface, multi-purpose arena. Um, I was just listening the other day to Regina and they were having their big aquatic center and it's millions over budget, <clears throat> which most projects do go over budget or you know, get added on or the add-ons that happen during it. And I think that is something for the next council. You know, it can get very, very um, complicated if you start talking about what it is actually gonna be. That will come down to, I think, where maybe the surveys would come in or possibly with the next council, definitely with the next council, we'll have to engage the public to find out what is the need of the community. If it vote comes back that there is an actual desire for a third surface, then that's when I think the conversation starts to become what type of surface. Does it become a multi-purpose center? Does it become something that the city borrows in order to build? Or does it become something that we wait for federal grants or some type of a grant and then build it like we did with Affinity Place. So I would be in favor of having the plebiscite, but I think surveys probably would happen with the next council versus this council, just because we don't have time to really look at them. So then it would be the next council that would take into consideration the wording of the survey, but definitely the plebiscite, because it would be simple. Okay, any other questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Clark and Councillor Willis. <coughs> Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, my only con not only concern is the question is yes I want to rink but is when do you ask the cost price and that that is more the the deciding factor after it's all done but I guess uh, if you find out people don't want it then I guess that discussion's kind of moot so I, I do think that people will, would have a different vote if they knew it was going to cost them 10 million dollars or three million dollars and that and that becomes uh, how the question is simply if you think we need one and then we'll worry if the need is there then, then we'll look at what the cost is. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's probably important to drill down when you have the question exactly what it is. You want a multi-purpose, uh, you know, like in Weybird, what did that cost, the Spark Center city manager? I believe it was 20. 20 sub billion. A basic rig will cost you 10 billion. Uh, Councillor Wally, sir. Thank you, Your Worship. I do think something like a plebiscite could drive voter turnout, which is very important, but I think it can't happen in isolation, that there does need to be a community education component, whether the education is just that when you arrive and you read the vote, it says, knowing a baseline cost of $10 million, I agree a third ice surf surface should be built without grant funding, at least there's context to the decision. Because if everything was free, we would all be in favor of everything. 
but to really gauge somebody's desire for a new rink, they need to know what the cost is and where we think that funding is going to come from. Yeah, because you have to be cognizant of the fact in Regina, which I would not agree with, they're looking at extending their debt limit by millions and millions. I think like $200 billion to help pay for the loss and, and some of the other capital costs. And that's over and above, I think, the 12 or $15 billion a year they have to pay for Mosaic Stadium for the next 15, 20 years. So I think it's very easy uh, to get yourself dug into a hole, but it won't be very easy to get out of there once you're down there. <laughs> anyway, uh, go ahead, Councillor Sarnik. Did you want to make that motion? I'll make the motion. I, I did forget the, again, this is just for information for the next council to go off of. It's not binding. Obviously, all those conversations will happen afterwards. If everybody votes no, you don't even have to have the conversation. So, again, this is just... Again, I just talked to so many people, I'm torn in between whether the need is there. I'm torn in between whether we want it or not. Yeah, spend so, that kind of money. Okay. That's where I'm at. Okay, have we got a seconder? Okay, no, I'm asking for a seconder. Then we can have more discussion if you want. Councillor Clark, okay. Councillor Walisa, you had a question? For clarification, is this motion that we proceed with a plebiscite? Yes or is it on the wording that will be circulated to the public for the plebiscite? My understanding is it's to have a plebiscite city clerk. Your Worship to Councillor Walliser. So if you agree on having a plebiscite, then we would have to work on the legal wording, wording of it and it would go through legal. It has to be positive and it can only say, you can only answer yes, yes or, or no. no. And it has to be eight weeks before the election. So we, I would bring it back to the September 9th meeting for approval. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, Coach report. Thanks, Your Worship. And, and again, I'm a, in agreement with a plebiscite, but I also think we really need to find a way to loop in our, our rural users. And I, I, I understand that it'll be mostly the taxpayers of Estevan that will be funding proposed rink or said rink, but I, I think we do need to find out if there's a want for the rural customers as well, because I mean, a good chunk of our people that go to that rink are from out of town and aren't in here, and maybe it's a good way to start having the conversation with the RMs as well. So I, I, I am in, agree in agreement with the plebiscite, but I think we need to find a way to loop our rural people in somehow. But the new council could have that survey after they get elected. That wouldn't be an issue. But then you're you're losing some of your your voting base if if. A third of the community says yes to this, but a third of the rural says no, but we don't know that until later. How, how do you gauge that? Well, two things. The rural probably aren't going to help pay for it if they are great. So I think it has to be our community that votes on it if we're going to pay for it. It's always nice to get a survey, a nice warm, fuzzy feeling how other people feel. But at the end of the day, if we're going to pay for it as a community of Estevad, as the city of Estevad, I would like to think that the city of Estevad will be voting on what they feel that decision should be. It's great to have the survey from the RM to see what they would like, but don't forget, in the RMs, they like to keep their small rigs going. That's uh, a tenant of what they like to do in the communities. A rig is a base. That's where a lot of the activities take place. So I would be surprised that they would you know, say, well, let's shut our rig down and build a new one, have the city of Estevan build a new one in the city of Estevan. I think all of our communities contribute now that we're down uh, to the two ice surfaces. They all come to the table in a positive fashion and say, great, you're going to help keep our rink alive, which we do. Beanfate, Torquay, Latman, all of those we help keep alive with our hockey base coming out of this community. I understand that and I respectfully disagree. Um, I do not see an RM of Estevan rink anywhere. Um, the RM of Estevan uses no, Estevan I say, rinks. Yeah, when I say RM, I mean the communities within the RM that have their own rinks. No, and I understand that. I, ju I just would like us to find a way to 
to loop them in to be able to have that conversation and maybe it is a, is a, a funding conversation we have with them as well but again I, I might be the odd man out here so I'll just well I'll if you it. want funding from the RMs then you'll have to go to each RM council and ask for funding first of all if they would agree as a council to support uh, the rink in the city of Esteban and secondly would they take out maybe a, a, a mill rate factor to go toward that I mean that's a separate discussion if you wanted to entertain that you'd have to get a motion from this council to send to the surrounding councils to help support a rink is that what you're saying I just wanted to be able to loop the RMs in and I, I, I I'm seeing I'm met with disagreements on that so all is good Okay, Councillor Robot. I think I think Councillor Ford does have a point, and I think that we have the RM liaison committee that maybe this could actually be brought up if there's another meeting prior before the election, and if not, then possibly at the first meeting with the new council. Okay, now that would be fine for the RM Esteban, but we have a lot of other RMs yeah. surrounding our community that if we bring the RM Esteban into the fold, to be fair, you should bring all of the other surrounding no, RMs no, I in agree. as well. I agree with you, but what I'm saying is okay. the survey that Councillor Ford is talking about is how you would loop in more people, more users of the rink, more people who um, pay the taxes that would actually ultimately be supporting this rink, but also because we have the RM liaison committee, it is a good way to start the conversation. The survey is also a good way. And then if it pro progresses on to stage two and three, that is when you could maybe loop in every other RM. I just think right now, we're just talking about the plebiscite. Do this, start simple, and then everything else we've kind of discussed tonight will be the next stage in to say, yeah, all right, I, I don't think we want to muddy the waters. Yeah. Tonight, we want to talk about the plebiscite. Uh, that if you wanted uh, Councillor Ford to get a captive audience, you could talk to each RM and then get them to agree in their water billing or whatever. It would go to every residence and in there would be a piece of paper with a ballot. Do you uh, support uh, the city of Estevan having another ice surface or not? You would get everyone then. Councillor Ford? Thank you, Mr. I just want to clarify, I'm not trying to muddy the waters. In this note from Councillor Cernick and the corresponding document, a survey was brought up, so I was just bringing my opinion. Okay. Okay, ready for the question? All in favor? Carrie, are you voting on this, City Clerk? <laughs> I would just like the word that, what is your verbiage that you would like? Verbiage. For myself, it is exactly that. Just does Esteban need another arena? Ice surface. Ice surface. Okay. Or, yes. Perfect. Thank you. And we can flesh that out. That'll be coming back to council anyway, City Clerk, right? Yeah, I have to have something to present to, to start. To legal. Okay. Okay, we had to vote on that. We're all in favor. We're all happy. Okay, next we go to Councillor Walliser uh, with diversity, equity, and inclusion discussion. Now, Councillor Walliser, are you suggesting uh, we incorporate this as this council, or are you suggesting that perhaps the next council, you would like to see that come in front of them? I don't know that we should be making this decision tonight and moving it forward when we only have a few meetings left. Thank you, Your Worship. Would you like me to present first or to, to answer your question? Uh, first? I guess, yeah, well, you can answer. Would, did you want the, the decision to come from Council to move this forward tonight? Based on the recommendations on the final page of the report, I think it's very important that this Council makes the decision because that will create a platform for the next Council to take follow up steps. So, you can see that the first recommendation is to ask about inclusion. That is so that as a council, we can make better decisions with less unintended consequences. So my request is that with each internal policy, bylaw, initiative of council or program of the city, every funding request we receive or grant we provide, that we ask for these questions to be asked and answered. So if we receive a request for funding from a minor sports organization, 
we would ask them to include these three questions and answers in their report. If one of our managers brought a report to us, we would also ask that these questions are asked and answered. This isn't without precedent. It's quite a common practice even in funding organizations. So when Saskatchewan Lotteries determines their grants, they do already ask, are there equity seeking groups within your organization? And that is part of their rubric to determine the allocation of funding is whether or not uh, groups at risk of being excluded, such as youth, seniors, people with disabilities, and so on are being targeted within the initiative. And that's what I'm suggesting we do as a city as well. Either of my recommendations can stand alone. I think we should vote on them separately in case we'd like to proceed with one and not the other. The second request is that the current city manager, current council and our existing management team complete the measuring inclusion tool for municipal governments. And the reason that I've asked for us to do it is because we're at the end of our term. So we are the most familiar that we will ever be with the current practices of the city of Estevan. City manager, if you can just advance to the slide that has the assessment tool. This is a sample of one component. And what I really like about this tool is that it doesn't need to be an all or nothing approach. If we have certain divisions of the city that we think this may not be relevant, we can choose to exclude them. And then just the number that you're dividing the total response from changes, but you still have a baseline for where your organization is at. So the one I chose to show is leadership. So to me, this would be applicable to council and the management team. And what they've done is they've given you an example for leadership by elected officials. Do our elected officials see work on inclusion as pulling staff resources away from more municipal services? If that's how our management team or individual counselors perceive our work, they would indicate that and it would score accordingly all the way to the goal, which would be a culture of inclusion, where elected officials publicly initiate and support inclusion related policies and initiatives, even if residents view it as controversial. So these scores are then tallied. It's confidential. You're not assigning your name to it. But then when this information is compiled, the new council can be presented with it and say, I see that from a leadership perspective, Internally, we're arriving somewhere, I would guess, between the invisible or aware side of inclusion. And then as a new council, they could say, are we comfortable with where we are? Is there easy, quick steps we could do to move us along in this work? If it is, do we want to attach instructions to it? Do we want to attach time or resources? Or is this something that we're not interested in pursuing, but then at the end of their term, they could reassess and see if progress has happened anyways. Does anyone have any questions after the report? Well, I, I have questions, uh, Councillor Wally, sir. Uh, inclusion is great. And I was uh, with you when we went through this at, at FCM. I see this uh, taking a lot of time and energy and time being money. And if we're looking at, I know it has in here a couple hours uh, training for each manager, uh, I just simply don't think it's fair for us at the end of our term, and I'm not going to say force this on the new council, but I would not be supporting this because I think this is something that the new council, uh, if they wish to entertain, I think that's great. Allow them to do so and all the power to them. I do not feel that us in the dying days of our tenure uh, should be forcing this on the new council. I'm sorry, I, I can't agree with that. Go ahead, Councillor Grove. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you for the presentation, Councillor Rollieser. I thought it was actually very informative because I too sat in on this uh, seminar when we were at FCM, and I also was very intrigued by it. 
I agree with you 110%. I don't think that we have to wait for a new council to do something. Um, I agree with your worship. If you're on your way out, you don't plan on running again, probably no sense in taking this. But for anyone who is planning on running again, for anyone who is in the current management, I see value in this. And so I appreciate your work you put into this report and I would support both of your recommendations truthfully. Okay, Councillor Clark. <clears throat> Thanks, Your Worship. I want to uh, thank uh, Councillor Wilizer for this. I think she comes from a perspective sometimes that uh, people that haven't walked her in her shoes go, uh, we don't understand what, <clears throat> what the problem is with how we do things. It's all about cost, and so often that's not the case. Sometimes it's just about taking a look at it, and I think uh, from Councillor Wilizer's uh, perspective I think she understands that and that it's important to have that as the, the first consideration when we do something is how is it going to affect certain uh, demographics and uh, I'll be supporting her for this thank you okay council report thanks your worship thank you Councillor Wilizer for this this great report um, I think recommendation number one is really really important as we're moving from this council to a new council because it sets the new council up to be able to ask those questions during budget time. Budget time happens immediately after the election and it allows our third party grant people, it allows our managers, it allows everybody presenting their budget to the city to say, hey, is this including important people in our city? Is this including people that we may have missed that may, you know, have been overlooked over the years? So I, I, I do support this. I think this is really important. Um, I do know that there is a cost to this, but um, the the two two paid hours per employee invited to participate is 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 not a big ask when it comes to deciding how we include people in our community. We have a lot of very diverse people in this community um, from all walks of life, and I think it's really important that we take the steps to include everybody, whether it be this council or next council or ten councils from now. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Seeing none. Ready for the question. All in favor. What's wrong, <laughs> I'll, I'll make oh, the recommendation. You didn't have, oh, I thought, okay. And I suppose, Councillor Wally, sir, you'll second it? Okay. Actually, I was just going to say, maybe Councillor Wally would like to make the recommendation. Because she did all the work. Did right. you want to make the I'll make the recommendation. Motion? Make the motion. I'll make the motion that we approve both recommendation one and two. Okay. And Councillor Vroba will second that, City Clerk. Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? For the record, I'm actually abstaining from voting because I am neither for it or against it. I think it's just something too big for to decide over in a couple days. Okay. okay, there you go. Okay, next under original communications, delegations, and petitions, we have the GFL cart report for June and July. Can we pass them both, yes. City Clerk, together? Okay, we can. Do we have a motion for that? Okay, Councillor Ford, Councillor Clark, ready for the question. All in favor? Carried. Okay, next, under written reports, we have from the Estevan Police Service the Q2 report, which uh, is a very good report. I'm sure Council has taken the time to read it. We have a motion to accept that, please. Councillor Ford, seconded by. Councillor Walliser, ready for the question. All in favor? Carried. Okay. Then next, under written reports of committees, we have from the Southeast uh, Transportation Planning Committee, the June 25th report. Do we have a motion for that? Councillor Clark, seconded by. Councillor Cernick. Councillor Clark, anything you want to add to that? Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, it, we, for the first time, we never met quorum at that meeting because of uh, harvest and things. It was kind of a surprise. I think everybody thought I'll be the only one missing, but I was there. Uh, we, uh, you will notice in the report that it, it is definite that the first three kilometers uh, from uh, SRI homes out to the bridge are not part of that uh, uh, highway project. So just wanted to clarify that that was acknowledged and that uh, that part won't be done. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Ready for the question? All in favor? Carried, thank you. Next, under executive reports, we have from the city manager the downtown revitalization scope adjustment. City manager, did you want to speak to that? Thank you, Your Worship. So we've got the final pricing in for some of our electrical and site furnishing items. Uh, unfortunately, they are a little uh, above what we had planned for for this year. So the report indicates some things that could be removed, such as banner lighting, uh, traffic lighting at um, 12th Avenue, uh, putting a four-way stop instead, uh, some electrical kiosks, uh, and deferring some of the items such as plants, <clears throat> which we wouldn't be putting in this November anyways. Uh, we could defer the uh, cost of this into next year, uh, as well as some of the benches, trash bins, bike racks, uh, tables, and doing those kind of over subsequent years uh, so we can properly manage the fiscal ability of the city. Uh, so there's some recommendations there to uh, adjust the boring bylaw this year by 500,000. That's uh, presented by Treasurer uh, in the bylaw reading tonight. Uh, there also is potentially some servicing funding under the Urban Highway Connector Program. So we will work with our provincial counterparts uh, to see if we can receive that funding. And uh, recommend to the incoming council that a portion of the Canadian Community Builds Fund uh, go to cover some of the engineering costs. So this is formerly the gas tax. Uh, this type of project generally would fall in line with what that funding is for. So those are the recommendations on the report and I can answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Any comments or questions from members of council on this report? Councillor Cernick and Councillor Ford. Thank you, uh, Worship. Um, so we're going to borrow 2.6. Does it change the payment an awful lot to just borrow 3 million and give us a little bit of contingency here because we know we're going to find something else? Uh, thank you, Councillor Sinek. So I will let uh, Treasurer Trudy Firth talk to this. Uh, we have uh, received some fav favorable rates as we can move forward. Uh, the initial plan was to try to keep debt levels at exactly the same. Uh, 2.6 keeps us still under 13 million, which is a good amount, but you're right. Another additional 400,000, Trudy may be able to talk to about the payments. Okay, uh, City Treasurer, it's all on your slender shoulders. What would you have to have us do? Thank you, Councillor Cernick, for that question. So again, I've got a request into them and they did answer me right away. And we're going to do what used to be called the swaps, which are now the core loans. So again, I wanted to keep it to the seven year and they gave us a rate of 4.24. Now, of course, they can only guarantee that rate for a short period of time. So I put a buffer of 0.5 in, but their consensus and uh, the discussions with the city manager, we thought the rates were gonna go down, as did our RBC representative. These rates are very good. So like $300,000 in this big scheme of things is not gonna make that much difference. We'd probably still stick with the seven year repayment plan. Okay, does that answer your question, Councillor Cerner? Yes. Sir. Okay, Councillor Ford. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Um, just, just a note to the public. Um, the banner lighting is not taking out any of the actual street lights. The banner lighting was specifically on some of the street poles that hold, held some of the banners saying, you know, welcome to Estevan or whatever they may hold. It specifically lit up those banners. Um, so we're not taking away any of the street lights. I did have a question about that in the last couple days. Um, just a, another thing, um, if we could, with the four-way stop happening, if we're able to have just the traffic committee kind of keep an eye on that over the next, you know, year, year and a half, just to see kind of how that plays out. If we need to put the, the stoplight back there, if it's an emer like urgent, then maybe we can kind of keep a better eye on it if the traffic committee's aware of it. Okay, we can uh, definitely do that, uh, Councillor Ford. And yeah, what, when you mentioned the lighting for the banners, it's basically a bar, about a two inch bar that the banner hangs on and then it shines light down, but you're already going to have the street light, so I don't think the uh, view is going to be obstructed that much. Good point. Uh, city Manager. Thank you, Worship. Uh, to Councillor Ford's comment, um, the electrical will be there, so we can add these lights in later. It doesn't add additional cost to continue to have the electrical required in those areas, so uh, I think that's a good uh, method is to look at the traffic committee and see where we go from there. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Councillor Vroba. Thank you, Your Worship. So also with that um, traffic uh, stop on 12th Avenue, it, we also could apply for grants through SGI if it uh, down the road every year we annually do apply for grants. So that would actually be something that would be a good use of that. And Absolutely. then also with the benches, the trash bins, the planters, 
tables, et cetera. There's always uh, different groups that are looking for ways to have their name brought forward in different projects. So hopefully that would also come. So thank you very much for this report. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, do we have the motion to accept this? Oh, Councillor Wallace, are you making the motion? I'll make the motion okay. for all three of the recommendations. Okay. Thank you. City Manager, you wanted to speak to that? Thank you, just to clarify. So Councillor Cernick rec uh, did mention about the additional borrowing. Do we want that in this motion or do we want to leave this as is and adjust the borrowing bylaw if requested by Council? Yeah, I think uh, Councillor Wallace are as suggested by the City Treasurer. Uh, Trudy, you're okay with those three recommendations, correct? Yes. Okay, so that's what your motion is reflecting, Councillor Wallace? Sir? That's correct. My okay. preference would be to keep the borrowing to a minimum and just as we already set a bylaw and needed to revisit it, if that happens again with additional overages, we can revisit the borrowing at that time. Okay, thank you. Have we got a seconder? Councillor Cernick. Okay, any further questions, comments? Seeing none, ready for the question. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Next, we have from Land Development. Uh, Richard, thank you for staying this evening. Uh, approval on the biomass. Now, we've been talking this biomass for a while. In December of 2022, Council approved a subdivision proposal to allow for the creation of an industrial lot that would be the site of a future biomass electrical generation facility. Basically, it's about 40 megawatts and it produces clean power from straw, uh, which is a biomass. Uh, since approval was granted by the city of Estevan, the, propon the proponent has been working on other elements of the proposal with third parties. In recent discussions with the proponent, it appears that the project may be ready to proceed to the next stage in the near future. To facilitate further work on the project, a time extension is required to keep the subdivision decision active. Background, decision on this subdivision, as mentioned, was issued on December 20th of 22. The decision includes a list, list of tasks that need to be completed to realize this project. The decision expires a year after issuance, but it can be reactivated through application of Section 172.6 of the Planning and Development Act. None of the conditions of approval are contrary to the city's current official community plan or zoning bylaw, so a time extension will not cause any bylaw conflicts. Considerations. Granting of a time extension will allow for city administration to work with the proponent to address the conditions of approval. Should a time extension not be granted, no further work will be possible under this subdivision approval. Should council wish to continue with this project, it is suggested that a time extension to June 30th of 2025 should allow sufficient time to move this forward. The recommendation from Land Development Services recommends that Council consider a time extension to subdivision approval of 04SUP2022 pursuant to Section 172.6 of the Planning and Development Act subdivision approval to be extended to June 30th, 2025. Did you have anything to add, Richard? I think I got it covered. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, all I can add, I guess, at this time is uh, we're hoping to have some good news in the next number of weeks here in September. And with this extension, this allows administration to continue uh, with the background uh, tasks on this project while we go through the municipal election and all the other tasks that the new council will have immediately following it. Okay, thank you for that. Any questions or comments from members of council? Councillor Ford, then Councillor Cernan. Councillor Cernan goes first. Do you want to pick nets now tonight? No. 
Just trying to be fair. Did you want to draw straws? Why no, don't we throw a dice? Just trying to throw be fair, a dice. Your worship. <laughs> um, I think this project has come a long way in the last couple of years, and um, it kind of feels like we're getting closer and closer to the finish line. So I would I would make the motion to um, allow this time extension on this. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Cernan. Thank you. I'll second the motion too, but I just wanted to clarify where this is again on this drawing. Like, I, I, I can't like I can't read the roads, and I'm not getting it. Wasn't, wasn't this north of the mall? Uh, or the, sorry, the comprehensive school. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. To, through to Councillor Cernick. Uh, this is the quarter section directly east of the Composite High School, and it would be in the northeast portion of that quarter section. So. Um, you know, the north-south road there is Kensington, and then there would be about a quarter of a mile uh, road going east from there, and then it's that big rectangular parcel. Um, the red line there, that shows the uh, boundary of the property, which is currently owned by the city of Estevan, and in the south portion of that property, that's where you have that uh, gravel road that goes around. The pond and then out towards the bypass. Okay. Sorry, what threw me off, I guess, would be the intersection at Kensington. There, there's like five. It looks like five buildings there that aren't there. So I just kind of, I guess that's what no, threw those, me off. Th those are actual lots, and they they do exist. Um, some it's, of them are treated as one entity, but yeah, they're on title. Okay, so not city lots, but they're owned. They're own, they're privately owned. Yes. Okay. Sorry. That, again, that's why it threw me off, and that's why. But we own that quarter where it's going to sit. In the red. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's and then correct. it's actually going to sit in the blue. The the parcel will, yes. Okay. The road allowance would only have to be developed for the first quarter mile to get to that blue square. But the land would be set aside so that it could be extended up to the uh, the next quarter down the road if need be. Uh, just for everybody's information there, the east boundary of that quarter section, that's the city RM boundary. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll second the motion. Okay, thank you. Councillor Cernick, any other further questions, comments, observations? Seeing none, ready for the motion. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Okay, next we have the Fire Chief's report for April, May, and June. City Clerk, can we do them all together? Yes, Your Worship. Okay, we have permission to do them all together. Do we have a motion on those, please? Councillor Wellieser, seconded by Councillor Cernick. Ready for the question, all in favor? Carried, thank you. Okay, next we have the water quality report for July. Could we have, for July 24, could we have a motion for that please? Councillor Clark. Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor Ford, thank you. Ready for the question, all in favor? Carried, thank you. Next, we have the building official report for July of 24. Could we have a motion, please, for that? Councillor Cernan. Seconded by Councillor Wallis. Thank you. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Introduction of bylaws. We have, we'll give first reading tonight to bylaw 2024-2086, borrowing bylaw, and tonight we'll give it first reading. Uh, let our publics uh, view it for a few weeks and then come back for second and third. So I will ask for first reading of bylaw 2024-2086 this evening. Thank you, Councillor Ford. Seconded by Councillor Cernick. Any questions or comments on this? Seeing none, all in favor? Carry. Thank you. Okay, next, under public hearings and reports, we have the public hearing for the proposed zoning of Willock Road. Land Development Services offers the following report related to a proposed rezoning of part of the residential lands adjoining St. Joseph's Hospital on the south side of Willock Road. Background and discussion. The purpose of the application is to rezone the three westernmost lots, 1A to 3A, of Block 139, 
Plan 1023710060 from the Residential District to the Medical Services District C5. The intent of the application is to allow for a daycare to be constructed on the property. The proposal was advertised in two issues of the Estevan Mercury and through mail to surrounding property owners. As of this date, no objections or inquiries to the proposal in response to the advertising has been received by Land Development Services. Considerations under the terms of the proposed bylaw, a development permit for a daycare on the property will have to be issued to ensure that the proposed bylaw will take effect. Under the proposed zoning district, a daycare would be a discretionary use, which would also require council approval. Other matters to be determined is a land of sale agreement and consolidation of the three lots into a single parcel. Options. Council has several options it can consider in determining this proposal bylaw. Council may deny the proposed bylaw at second or third rating should council determine that the proposed use is not appropriate. Number two, council may approve the second rating but delay the third rating until the project is more advanced. Number three, council may approve both second and third ratings of the proposed bylaw with the assurance that council has additional measures that can be used to ensure the public interest is followed on this development proposal. The final comments, Land De Development Services supports the proposed bylaw and recommends consideration of both final readings of the proposed bylaw. Richard, did you have anything to say? before I move forward, and then I guess city manager wants to say anything. What would you like to say? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, this bylaw basically is to determine whether or not this, pro this property is suitable for the proposed use, which would be a daycare. Uh, it doesn't go beyond that. So there would, be, there would have to be a subdivision uh, done to consolidate the lots there again. Uh, the municipality has to uh, make a decision on that. There's also a development permit that would be needed. Council would have to make a decision on that. So you you are covered if uh, something does happen that the uh, proposal uh, doesn't get uh, completed, then these properties would go back to their original zoning, which is residential. Okay, thank you, city manager. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. No formal letter was written into Land Development. I did get one comment about why the city would take residential lots and convert them to something like this and recommended there could be a possibility uh, north of Pleasantdale School for this type of facility. So we have been working with the school division. There's a lot of hoops to jump through at this point, uh, but just wanted to bring that to Council's uh, consideration that that comment was made to me. Okay, thank you. Councillor Vrobo. Yeah, that's actually a really good comment, City Manager, because that would bring the daycare closer to the two schools, especially for kids that need to go to the daycare after school. So that would be, uh, but that doesn't actually change tonight. Like if we go ahead and proceed with the um, first, second and third reading, and then that doesn't pan out or they're not interested in doing that, then this is no harm, no foul, right? Yeah, and I, I did, that's right, Councillor Vroba, and I did talk to Carolina. She said she would rather be where the three lots are, okay. uh, less interaction with kids, with the little ones. Uh, she'd have to put a fence up, but you know, when the playground is out, she doesn't want interaction between the little ones and the older kids. And they do have a busing system that currently goes to the other daycare, so I mean, that's probably a small, and she is going to be the business owner, so she would have final say. The only other thing that I would recommend is a parking lot to ensure that there's ample parking so that the parents can come and go without having to be on Wellick Road that can sometimes be a busy road. Good point. And Richard, you're okay with making some accommodation for that? Like, there is parking, right? Uh, thank you, Your Worship and everyone in Council. Uh, yes, uh, we, we have a, um, a drawing in now that shows exterior and there, there is uh, a fair amount of parking provided for staff. Uh, I believe at full staffing, they'll need up to nine parking stalls for just the, the staff that are working there. 
and then there will have to be other parking for uh, for pickup drop off maybe one or two for parents and then also a uh, for school buses to pick up and drop off when you're nearby uh, again that I have a drawing that's been brought in but it's not as complete as it could be we're still working with that that would be part of the development permit uh, process which again would come through to council should this project advance okay thank you for that so under consideration of land development bylaw 2024-2085 rezoning of willock road is there anyone in the gallery who wishes to address council on the proposed land development services seeing no one is there anyone in the gallery who wishes to address council on this particular matter second call seeing no one so uh, city clerk please note in the minutes that no one has come forward against this proposal i have ascertained that there is no one present in the gallery who wishes to address council on this matter so now we'll move to second reading of bylaw 2024-2085 a bylaw of the city of estevan to amend zoning bylaw 2022-2061 being a bylaw of the City of Estevan to regulate the use of land and location of buildings and other structures in the City of Estevan. Do we have a motion for second reading? Thank you. Councillor Walliser, seconded by Councillor Vroba. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. Thank you. Now I'll ask for third reading of bylaw 2024-2085. Bylaw of the City of Estevan to amend zoning bylaw 2022-2061, being a bylaw of the City of Estevan to regulate the use of land and location of buildings and other structures in the City of Estevan. Councillor Cernick, thank you. Councillor Ford, thank you. Seconded by. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Okay, next, under giving notice, uh, thank you, Richard. We have nothing this evening. Motions from committee, we have nothing uh, this evening. Uh, inquiries, Councillor Vroba. Thank you, Worship. I actually had quite a few inquiries. A couple of them were based on home uh, business licenses, and I referred them to City Hall, and they're going to phone when they need to have those questions. Also, I had an inquiry into the tank at the Hillside Dog Park, the water tank that's there. So the city manager and one of our managers is looking into that as well. And then I had a really detailed email come to me from a resident and it was really appreciated actually because she put a lot of effort into the email and it talked about the incentives that Musaman is offering, which kudos to Musaman, they're doing a heck of a job making sure that everyone knows about their incentives. Um, but it was pleasant for uh, me to be able to reply back that we have some great incentives too. So I referred her to the city page. Um, maybe we could take a lesson from Musaman and really get our stuff out there next time or do a marketing campaign. She also discussed about bringing more industry uh, to Estevan, uh, even talked about yearly music festivals, which I was pleased to let her know that we actually had four music festivals in the Estevan area this year, and majority of those plan to become um, annual events. So also uh, just a bunch of different things that she talked about with Rafferty, with tourism, and so uh, I guess the bottom line was a lot of the things that she discussed we're actually already doing here in Estevan, and a lot of it is done through the city of Estevan, through the ECDEV board, but also through a lot of dedicated volunteers. And so I just encourage anyone that has questions um, regarding what might be happening right now in the city of Estevan, or what we're doing, or what another group is doing, is to get involved. It's um, She actually has her finger on the pulse of the things that the community needs and are already doing and I think uh, more people have those questions so reach out to council reach out to different boards and the more people that get involved the greater our community becomes and maybe you could suggest uh, Councillor Vroba for her to run on council in the upcoming election I definitely I don't know if she has an interest in that but yes I can definitely uh, reach go. out to her thank you and yeah no one has tried harder for to attract more industrial based businesses than we have and as you know nuclear now is finally on the horizon 
uh, with the decision made by SBC, SBC. That's great news. And what we discussed tonight with the biomass plant, we've been working on that since 21. And so that was actually one of her comments, was that she feels that the City of Estevan has done great things in creating more industrial um, entities to come to the city, but maybe not enough in creating tourism and festivals and different things like that that draw different crowds. So, yeah, it, we, I mean, like I told her, we have some work to do, but we've been doing great things. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, casino was talked about, but again, I know how many times that's been dragged through and talked about and so just for future reference um i think that is one thing that people sh can do is just reach out to anyone that's already involved and get your ideas heard because many minds make for great things to happen absolutely and on the coal side for the coal mine and maybe we don't broadcast broadcast that enough we're looking at hydrogen from coal which that project is moving forward uh, very well. That's one of Gord's main projects right now that he's looking at. And also graphite from coal. Uh, we're working with scientists down in George Washington University, and that looks very promising. Uh, so yeah, we have a lot going on, and it seemed to me like every weekend we had a concert this summer, but you know, there's always maybe one more we can squeeze in. And you youngsters on council, as you continue to stay and move this platform forward, uh, maybe that's another thing that uh, you young ones can look at. Councillor Clark, that, I, when I went young ones, I wasn't looking, you're pretty you great, buddy. Yeah, I was Sorry. I had, not, I had nothing tonight, but then when you pointed me out, I, <laughs> I You're pretty young. I do want to thank all of the volunteers that put all of this stuff on and put the hard work in to make them happen because there's so much that's gone on. I went down to uh, the Bin Zebo in, uh, in the park, and they had open mic night there. So there are things happening in the community all the time, and the volunteers just do a wonderful job for that throughout the whole summer and throughout, uh, throughout the whole year. So, uh, yeah, thank, thank you. you for that. We can't say yep. enough, you know, for our volunteers. We have the best, as we've always said, in this part of the province, and we couldn't do so many of the things that we do without them. Uh, Councillor Wellies. Thank you, Your Worship. Along the same theme, I would like to mention the all-girls hockey camp that was hosted the first week in August. This is an opportunity that really showcased Affinity Place and all of its applications, and it brought female athletes from all over Saskatchewan and down into the States. Their first year was a sellout. They brought 100 athletes to Estevan, they filled our hotels and restaurants, and they really um, created a holistic experience to ensure that the documented problem with women and girls leaving sports when they enter adolescence, this program is a direct response to try and improve those numbers moving forward. So a big congratulations because there were many businesses and volunteers from the community to make that a success. I do have one inquiry tonight. Many people have asked me if we have the ability to send out bills via email, as well as a billing reminder, similar to those that Sask Energy and Sask Power send, both for taxes and utilities. Okay, uh, I'll throw that one to City Manager. Thank you, Your Worship, to Councillor Wallies. So utility billing, you can definitely phone down there and they will send you e-bills, they're called. I know I have signed up for it. I do not receive a paper copy of my utility bills. Uh, taxes is separate. We can't just lump them together. They're two separate systems. Uh, but we do have the TIPS program where you can pay monthly on that and receive those electronically. I do believe the yearly assessment ones have to be sent out via mail at this point. Uh, but it's something uh, myself and City Treasurer can look into moving forward. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Wallies. To clarify, we would ask people to call 634-1800 and we'd be able to help them with that concern? Correct. Thank you. Yeah, and as we move uh, forward, those are good points. We'll try to continue to, to streamline the billing. You know, going back to us old guys like me and Lindsay, we had uh, Pony Express, but, you know, we are moving along and it will get better. Councillor Ford. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, a big congratulations to the Estevan U18 AA Brewers for winning the Western Baseball Championships this weekend. 100%. They had a heck of a tournament and we're very, very proud of them. Um, another thing is that our Tech Hub is hosting uh, the Innovation Conference for Economic Development from September 10th until 12th. 
Tickets are going to be online at icedconference.ca where you can also see the full three-day slate of schedules. Um, tickets are $120 for the full three-day conference and that gives you your banquet ticket as well. And we are very pleased to announce that Jeff Sanquist will be in person at our banquet along with John Gormley and both of them will be speaking. Thank you, Councillor Ford. Uh, it's going to be a great few days and uh, already we're selling uh, tickets fairly quickly. So please get your tickets uh, so you're not disappointed. And uh, yeah, Coach Kahinka did a fantastic job, uh, him and the uh, 18 and under, and uh, we couldn't be prouder. Councillor Cernick. Thank you, Worship. All of my inquiries were about the downtown revitalization and tonight's uh, scope adjustment answered all the questions. So okay. thanks for that. Yeah, thank you. And we're continuing to move forward on that. and. Uh, uh, we hope optimistically that uh, we can get things buttoned up, get uh, the water, the sewer, the storm all done, get compaction done, and even uh, get that first lift of pavement down before freeze up. We're, we're very optimistic on that. Uh, correct, City Manager? Correct. Did you have anything else you'd like to say this evening? Nothing to add, Your Worship. City Treasurer? Nothing. You've had a lot of weighty decisions. You don't have anything else to say. You're out of energy. Okay, City Clerk? Not tonight, Your Worship. Nothing tonight. Okay, with that, do we have a motion, please, to move into committee? Thank you. Councillor Ford, seconded by Councillor Cernick. All in favor? Carried. We stand adjourned. Good night, everyone. If you'd like to share your feedback on the program you just watched, contact us today 